Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sam and this video is about kidney ultrasound reporting. We will see how to write kidney ultrasound reports. This will include findings and impression and will only involve the kidneys. Other organ reports are not included. The first case is of simple renal cyst. The clinical indication in this example is a routine ultrasound. These are the findings. You can write a well defined anechoic cystic lesion is identified, and then you can write whether it is in the right or left kidney, and after that, you can write the size of the cyst. Then you can write the cyst has a smooth border and thin walls consistent with a simple renal cyst and then you can write about other abnormalities such as calculi or hydronephrosis and in the end you can write about the appearances of the renal cortex and medulla this is the impression for this example Findings are consistent with a simple renal cyst. No evidence of associated renal calculi or hydronephrosis. No significant abnormalities identified. Clinical correlation is recommended. It is important to write about clinical correlation because a diagnosis is not only made on ultrasound alone. Our next case is polycystic kidney disease. These are the findings. Both kidneys are enlarged with multiple cystic lesions scattered throughout the renal parenchyma, ranging in size from a few millimeters to several centimeters in diameter. The cysts have thin walls and no solid components. The renal cortex is thinned and the medulla appears echogenic, consistent with chronic kidney disease. So this case of polycystic kidney disease was also associated with chronic kidney disease. In the impression, you can mention the polycystic kidney disease with multiple cystic lesions present in both kidneys. And if there are other abnormalities as well, you can mention them here. And in the end, you can write about clinical correlation. This is a case of kidney stones. The clinical history was flank pain and suspected renal stone. These are the findings. There is evidence of two echogenic foci in the upper pole of the left kidney. Then their measurements are written. There was no associated hydronephrosis or hydroureter in this case. And the right kidney was normal with no evidence of calculi or hydronephrosis and the renal cortex and medulla appeared normal in both kidneys. In the impression you can mention the presence of stones and their measurements and in which kidney they are found and also mention any associated hydronephrosis or hydroureter after these lines, you can write about the other kidney. And in the end, you must write about clinical correlation. This is a case of staghorn stone. The clinical history was flank pain. You can write the size of the kidney. And then you can write there is evidence of a large echogenic structure in the central region consistent with a staghorn stone 
and after that you can write the size of the stone and its location and if it is causing hydronephrosis you can write that in this case it was causing moderate to severe hydronephrosis of the entire right kidney and if there is hydroureter present you can write about that then you can write about the appearance of the other kidney this is the impression Findings are consistent with a staghorn stone in the right kidney causing moderate to severe hydronephrosis of the entire right kidney. There was no associated hydroureter and the left kidney was normal. Clinical correlation is recommended for appropriate management. This example is of nephrocalcinosis both the kidneys are diffusely hyperechoic and they have multiple small calcifications which are seen throughout the renal parenchyma in this example the corticomedullary differentiation is preserved in the impression you can write findings are consistent with bilateral nephrocalcinosis with multiple small calcifications seen throughout the renal parenchyma the corticomedullary differentiation is preserved in this case and there was no associated hydronephrosis and in the end it is important to write about clinical correlation Here is a case of pyelonephritis. The kidney is enlarged and there is increased echogenicity of the renal parenchyma. The renal cortex is thickened and the corticomedullary differentiation is indistinct. Here is the impression. The findings are consistent with right sided pyelonephritis in this case there was increased echogenicity thickening of renal cortex and loss of corticomedullary differentiation this example is of chronic kidney disease in the findings both kidneys are small in size and have increased echogenicity of the renal parenchyma also there is poor visualization of medullary pyramids this is the impression findings are consistent with chronic kidney disease with both kidneys small in size and increased echogenicity of the renal parenchyma also there is poor visualization of medullary pyramids here is a case of renal failure on ultrasound the findings can be small size of both kidneys with increased echogenicity of the renal parenchyma the corticomedullary differentiation is lost in the impression the findings are consistent with chronic renal failure with both kidneys small in size increased echogenicity of the renal parenchyma and loss of corticomedullary differentiation ultrasound alone is not sufficient to diagnose a renal failure so further evaluation is needed you must mention this in the report now we move on to angiomyolipoma in this report example the left kidney measures 10 cm in length and appears normal in size and shape a hyperechoic mass measuring 3.5 cm in greatest dimension is seen within the mid portion 
of the right kidney. The mass has a mixed echogenicity with areas of solid tissue and areas of fat attenuation. And there was no evidence of hydronephrosis or other significant abnormalities in the right kidney. And the left kidney was normal. In the impression, the findings are consistent with an angiomyolipoma in the mid portion of the right kidney. Then its size is written, followed by its echogenicity and appearance. And in the end, clinical correlation and further imaging may be warranted for appropriate management of the angiomyolipoma. This is a case of Wilms tumor. Its usual findings are a large heterogeneous mass with solid and cystic components and is surrounded by a thin capsule. Here is the impression. The findings are consistent with a large heterogeneous mass in the mid portion of the left kidney measuring 8 cm in greatest dimension with areas of solid and cystic components and a thin capsule suspicious for Wilms tumor. The findings for renal cell carcinoma usually include a hypoechoic mass with irregular borders and heterogeneous echotexture. These findings are written in the impression. The hypoechoic mass with irregular borders and heterogeneous echotexture. These findings are suspicious for renal cell carcinoma. This report is for crossed fused ectopia. These are the findings. The left kidney is fused with the lower pole of the right kidney with the left renal pelvis communicating with the fused renal pelvis. The combined kidney measures 11.2 cm in length and appears to have a normal echo texture. The right ureter is seen arising from the fused renal pelvis and the left ureter appears to be absent. These findings are written in the impression and in the end the line for clinical correlation is written. It is also important to mention other imaging modalities such as CT or MRI which are necessary for appropriate management of this congenital anomaly. Here is a report for grade 1 hydronephrosis. There is mild dilatation of the collecting system measuring up to 10 millimeters in diameter. Here is the impression. Findings are consistent with grade 1 hydronephrosis of the right kidney without evidence of calculi, masses, or other focal lesions. In the report of a grade 2 hydronephrosis, you can write moderate dilatation of the collecting system and you can write the regions involved. Then you can write the measurement of the collecting system. In this example, it was up to 20 millimeters in diameter. Here is the impression. Findings are consistent with grade 2 hydronephrosis 
of the right kidney without evidence of calculi, masses or other focal lesions. And you can end the impression by writing about clinical correlation. This is a report for grade 3 hydronephrosis. You can write marked dilatation of the collecting system and then you can mention the location. Here the collecting system measurement was 30 millimeters in diameter. This is the impression. The findings are consistent with grade 3 hydronephrosis and the impression ends with the statement of clinical correlation. In grade 4 hydronephrosis, there is severe dilatation of the collecting system and there is significant thinning of the renal cortex with loss of normal renal parenchymal thickness which in this case was less than 5 millimeters in some areas. And here is the impression. Findings are consistent with grade 4 hydronephrosis with significant thinning of the renal cortex. These findings are concerning for obstructive uropathy leading to potential renal damage or renal failure. You must also write about urgent urological intervention because urgent treatment is required in this case. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and stay tuned for more imaging videos.